It wasn't that long ago that a $2,000 Apple computer looked like this. It has a hinge, a big screen, a full-size keyboard, a trackpad, and a handful of ports, which is honestly pretty standard stuff. Things are a little different now. Apple has insisted that the iPad is the perfect expression of the future of computing. Those are their words. So for some people, this new iPad Pro just might be the $2,000 Apple computer to invest in. It's almost shockingly thin and light. It runs crazy fast because of its A12X Bionic chipset, and the standard USB-C port makes it more flexible than any other iPad before it. On paper, at least, this 12.9-inch iPad Pro I've been testing comes the closest to actually being able to replace something like a traditional laptop. For me, at least, it doesn't completely close the gap. For some of you, though, the level of power and flexibility here just might fit the bill. Before we figure out who might actually benefit from this absurdly powerful tablet, let's run through a few basics first. And really, where else can we start besides design? I mean, just look at this thing. It isn't just the thinnest iPad Apple has ever made. It's also a full inch shorter than the original 12.9-inch iPad, and it weighs about 0.2 pounds less. That might not sound like a lot, but trust me, it makes a difference. As much as I wanted to love Apple's first huge iPad Pro, it was always just a little too unwieldy for me. I could never just hold it in one hand, and shoving it into a backpack next to my laptop, well, that always just felt kind of absurd. Since Apple dramatically trimmed down this design, this big iPad feels surprisingly manageable. Reading on the subway is less ridiculous, holding it up to watch YouTube videos in bed is easier, and cradling it so I could doodle with the new Apple Pencil is surprisingly nice. Long story short, Apple took the iPad's aesthetic in a very different direction this year, and it really paid off. So yeah, this definitely doesn't feel like a traditional iPad. That goes for its software, too. This thing runs iOS 12, but since there's no home button here, Apple adapted the gestures from the iPhone X series to work on this bigger display. If you've used an iPhone X before, you know exactly what to expect. You swipe up to go to your home screen, you swipe up and hold to see all your running apps, and swipe down from the top right corner for Control Center. You know, the usual stuff. If you haven't used an iPhone X before, I'm sorry. This is all going to take a little getting used to. Beyond that, you have your usual set of iPad multitasking gestures, so you can run apps side by side or fire up a floating window in case you want to move one of them around the screen. This is all really helpful for when you're trying to multitask and get stuff done, but we'll get to that a little later. There are a few other things worth noting before we really dig in. The Face ID sensor here is the same as the one we got in the most recent iPhone Xs, so it's really fast, even when you're not holding the iPad upright. The camera around back is a 12 megapixel sensor that I was actually wrong about. This isn't the one Apple used in the XS. They had to go with a slimmer sensor because this body is so thin. It's actually pretty good, but honestly, if you're using an iPad to take photos, you're probably doing something wrong. Oh, and the handful of microphones built into the iPad have been surprisingly solid, too. I've taken a handful of FaceTime calls with them, and the person on the other end was actually fairly pleased with the way that I sounded. Whew, okay, now we're getting to the good stuff. I think ultimately, if you're considering buying a new iPad Pro, you're probably doing it for one of three reasons. One, you want as close to the ideal mobile entertainment experience as you can get. Two, you're a creative and need great pencil support and lots of horsepower. Or three, you actually want to use this thing to get some work done and maybe give up on a more traditional computer in the process. Let's tackle these in order. If your biggest concern is flopping onto your couch and watching movies on your tablet, you're gonna find a lot to like here. The screen here is the exact same size and resolution as the earlier 12.9-inch iPad, and as far as LCD screens go, this one is a beauty. You'll find plenty of rich colors, especially in these really beautiful wallpapers, and viewing angles are excellent because the LCD panel and the glass covering it are bonded together. And even better, Apple's ProMotion display tech is back, meaning that motion on the screen, whether you're swiping through web pages or scrolling through menus, Everything refreshes at a rate of 120 hertz. That's super smooth motion, and it might just spoil every other tablet for you. Meanwhile, the four speakers wedged into the iPad sides are excellent too, but that's not really a surprise. The iPad Pros have always had great speakers, and Apple definitely kept that tradition going here. Oh, and if gaming is more your thing, you're also in luck. The A12 Bionic chipset was already really fast in the iPhone XS, but the updated A12X Bionic Apple went with here is even more absurd. 
Some synthetic benchmarks suggest it packs even a little more processing power than certain MacBook Pro configurations. That's, that's, that's pretty wild. And there are some big games in graphical performance too, so games like Asphalt 9 and Fortnite look great. Are they as immersive as, say, Xbox One games? No, generally not. But at least developers have the overhead they need to build stunning next-generation mobile games. All told, the iPad Pro makes for a great portable TV, it's just a really expensive one. Of course, it's also much more than just that. Okay, now let's say you're an artist. The 12.9-inch Pro we've been testing makes for a really capable canvas, but it really shines when you're using the new Apple Pencil. Here's the abridged version. The Pencil now has a flat side and magnetically attaches to the iPad Pro for storage and charging. This feels brilliant for two reasons. One, it all but ensures your Apple Pencil never runs out of battery, and in my experience, I've never seen the battery dip below 98%. More importantly, it keeps the pencil close by, and that just makes you want to use it more. Take it from me, the original pencil was really easy to misplace, and those caps covering the lightning connectors? Forget about it, I lost those immediately. It's also worth noting that the pencil now has a touch-sensitive region you can double tap to switch between certain tool presets. For now, the list of compatible apps is pretty limited. You can use it to switch between the pencil and the eraser in Notes and Procreate, but I'm pretty sure that list is going to get longer very soon. Oh, and for the record, this thing is just a pleasure to draw and draft with. The latency between drawing on the screen and seeing the line appear is the same as on last year's Pros, and if you actually tap on the screen while it's off with the pencil, it dumps you straight into the Notes app. If you're coming from the original Pros, you'll notice a significant performance difference in just latency and overall feel. This is kind of the Apple Pencil I've wanted to use all along. Unfortunately, there's no way to just save money and buy an older Apple Pencil instead because there's no lightning port here for pairing. You have to shell out $130 for the new one. If you're a serious sketcher or a digital artist, it's probably worth the expense, but everyone else just does not need to worry about it. There's plenty of horsepower here to cut videos too, if that's more your thing. Over the weekend, I shot about 20 minutes of 4K footage at a cousin's baptism, and cutting it all together into a seven minute adorable, if I do say so myself, montage was largely painless. I couldn't export in 4K because, well, Adobe Rush is just kind of dumb like that, but the 1080p render took about five minutes, and that's honestly not bad at all. But what if you're thinking of taking the ultimate plunge and replacing your computer with an iPad Pro altogether? Yeah, you might want to hold off on that. Yes, the iPad Pro is absurdly powerful, and you can trick it out with more storage than most people will ever need. This model, for instance, ships with one terabyte of storage, and that's more than I've ever had in any computer I've ever owned. And if you're a writer like me, this smart keyboard cover thing is actually pretty nice. There's a good amount of key travel, and the keys are covered by a single fabric membrane to keep liquid from getting in. I'm sure better keyboards will show up eventually, but I wrote my review and this script on the iPad Pro's keyboard, and you know what? I didn't hate myself when it was all over. But replacing your laptop with an iPad requires more than just a keyboard. We need a certain degree of flexibility. That's why we have a USB-C port here instead of a traditional lightning connector. It's a potential game changer, but in my experience, a very finicky one. Over the past week, I've plugged in just about everything I could find into this port. I plugged in a Blue Yeti microphone that GarageBand had no problem recognizing. With a dongle that I usually use with my MacBook Pro, I connected an SD card, and wouldn't you know it, photos popped up to import all of my photos without any trouble. USB-C headphones were obviously okay, but you can get really weird with some of this stuff. External monitors are no problem with the right adapter, and if you wanted to, you can even connect this to your local network via Ethernet. I don't know why you would, but you can. You can even use it to charge your iPhone, provided you have the right kind of adapter. Here is the rub, though. Since Apple hasn't really elaborated on what kind of device support people can expect, my time with the iPad Pro has just been one long trial and error session. Take USB drives, for instance. They were one of the first things that I tried, and they just don't work at all, which is both not a surprise and really frustrating. I get that Apple wouldn't want you to artificially expand your iPad storage, but honestly, would it have been so difficult to let you move files between these devices like on a normal computer? And that brings me to another issue. I generally like iOS 12 quite a bit, but it is in no way a desktop class OS. And some of you might think, yeah, well, that's sort of the point. 
I don't know that that argument really flies, especially on a device with the ambitions that this one does. The split screen and multitasking tricks are really helpful. I firmly believe it's easier than ever to be productive with an iPad. Unfortunately, because of how our publishing system works, I couldn't really use it inside Safari, and I'm sure that's the case for at least a few of you who rely on specific web services. And iOS's Files app continues to be really frustrating. There is no way to create folders to store files directly on the iPad. For that, you have to work directly inside iCloud Drive. And since you can't really access a local file directory, you can't, for instance, download documents from Gmail to view later. These are the kinds of little computing tasks we don't really think about often because they're so mundane, but the fact that they're just not doable on a machine this powerful seems a little silly. At the end of the day, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is a tremendous machine. It's sleek, it's powerful, and in many, many ways, it's very capable. I'm sure I'm not surprising anyone when I say this is the best iPad Apple has ever made. While some people will honestly benefit from the absurd performance and the artistic tools this thing provides, it is profound overkill for most people. Still, that overkill serves a purpose. This is the first time I've actually thought about replacing my work computer with an iPad Pro. And while that's just not doable at the moment, this thing makes me really excited for whatever Apple builds for next year.